REST web services are widely used in modern web development and are the backbone of microservices and cloud computing. In this video, we will see how easy it is to consume a REST web service inside an HTML page. We will start off by examining a REST web service we had developed earlier in my video, building REST-based web services with Spring Boot. I have made few minor modifications to that and you can download the source code from GitHub if you want to follow along. Here is the GitHub URL and it is also there in the description below. And again, this is just an example web service. You can apply this concept to any other REST web service. Next, we will create a simple HTML page to show how to consume the REST service and display the data. First, let us go to the browser and type HTTP localhost 8080 slash persons slash all to access our REST web service. It is a get call which returns the person objects with attributes ID, first name, last name and age. We have two of these objects right now. Let's say we want to consume this web service inside an HTML page. Here I have a text editor open where I have created a file index.html. This HTML page can of course be a part of a web application and of course you can use any IDE to create this but just to show the concept and show that it does not depend on any tool I am creating a standalone HTML page in a simple text editor. Let's first create the structure of the page with the HTML tag, the head and the body. Let us give a title person information and set the char set as UTF-8. Inside the body, let's create a div with id person info where we want to display the data of the consumed REST web service. Let's now write JavaScript within the script tag. Let's define the base URL as HTTP localhost 8080 slash persons. Now let us create a function load persons. Inside, we create a variable XML HTTP with the new XML HTTP request. This is used for AJAX calls. We call the open method where we pass the HTTP method here get. Next is the URL to call which we are forming by concatenating the base URL with slash all to form the final URL. And the third parameter is that this call should be asynchronous. Next we code for the event handler on ready state change which is called whenever the ready state or the state of the request changes. Inside we are checking if the read state has a value of 4 or done and if the response status is 200 or successful. Then we receive the persons in the response using json.parse parsing the xml http.response text. At this point we have received the data from the call and we can now fill it in any HTML element. Let's say we want to put it in a table structure. So we create a variable, call it table top. Now for multiple line string, we put the spatial code string which is right above the tab on a Mac. We create the header row within the tr tag and th tags, the column names, id, first name, last name and age. Let us close the table element in a variable table bottom. Now we fill the main table content from the data we received from the rest call. We got a number of person objects so we will create a row for each. First let us declare and initialize the main variable. So within a for loop for i equal to 0, i less than persons dot length and incrementing it by 1 we iterate over the person's object returned in the response. For each person object, we create a table row. We concatenate it to the main variable. So inside trtd, we first concatenate persons accessing the object at index i and then get its id. Let's copy and paste the same structure and then obtain the other fields as person's i dot first name person's i dot last name, person's i dot age. Now let us construct the entire table by concatenating the table top, main 
and table bottom variables. Let's get the person info div by using document get element by id and to its inner html let's assign the table variable. Finally we need to call the xml http.send which will make the rest call which will be handled by the on ready state change function. Finally let us call the load persons function upon the page load by using window.onload. Let's save this. Let's go to the file system and here is the file which we had created. Double click on the file which opens it in the browser. And here we see our table with the two person object rows which are obtained by calling the rest service. Now when you run this you may obtain an error related to cross origin resource sharing if the application code for the rest service has not modified the headers to allow for that. For a Spring Boot application you can add the add cross origin annotation at the controller or the method level. You can download the source code for the rest service from github to see that. In this video we saw the example rest service first and then we created an html page in which using xml http we call the same rest url and displayed the data obtained in a tabular structure. Thanks for watching.